All right, boys and girls, breaking out the zombie apocalypse handgun here, my Smith & Wesson M&P 45 full size. Yeah, buddy, let's have some fun. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. You know, Chad and I were looking at some things in the uh, collection in terms of what we could do videos on, and I could not believe that I haven't made a video on my M&P 45 full size. Like, out of all the random guns that I shoot, it's like the ones that I've run into the most. <laughs> I haven't even made videos on the most common ones yet, so I thought we would uh, visit this particular video. I definitely want to take a moment to thank the folks at Big Daddy Unlimited for helping keep us in ammo and accessories that we need to make these videos. Uh, I was able to get a set of high night vision uh, suppressor height sights, which is actually a really hard thing to find for the MMPs uh, in stock, and they had those, which was cool. And on this particular pistol, we also installed an Apex duty kit, which gets this trigger down to a nice four and a half pound trigger squeeze in that ballpark. And Apex has done some really, really great work for the MMP pistols. Dare I say, uh, the standard for MMP pistol triggers. Uh, they have a tactile res reset kit, uh, which is also known as a clicker kit. Uh, that they sell for these guns. Now, this one does not have the clicker installed, uh, but we do have the Apex uh, action kit installed in it. Now, we're not using the Apex uh, trigger bow, but they do a wide variety of different things for the M&P pistols, and they should certainly be looked at. We are going to have a video coming up on the Streamlight TLR-1HL. I've got it dropped on here for fun. And you guys probably, you know, if you follow us on a regular basis, you saw the Botax sale that we posted of the 14 shot M&P mags for 10 bucks. <laughs> so we bought a whole bunch of those to play with here in this particular video. For our suppressor, we're gonna be running the AAC Tyrant 45. This one's a full size. The newer Tyrants that are out now, they sell in what they call an M configuration, which means modular. It can be changed out into a shorter configuration. Uh, this can is a little bit long, but it sounds really nice and it's got generous volume. Uh, so it does a great job. This M&P was one of those uh, M&Ps that they sold uh, some time back that had the kit barrel, right? You had the standard barrel and the uh, full threaded barrel. So this is a full size M&P 45. A lot of folks have been asking us to get into some of the 2.0 stuff that's coming out. I saw the 2.0 shields, uh, the EZ 380s, the EZ 9s, uh, and things like that. We will be getting into some newer M&Ps as well in some future videos. I just wanted this to be a fun little video on this gun because it is kind of crazy. And we got a ton of feedback on the Instagram uh, pictures that we posted on this particular rig a few weeks ago. So we thought we'd do a video on it. All right, 14 shot mags. You can see that they protrude out of the bottom of the pistol a good bit. Um, compared to the FNX 45 Tactical, um, this gun is a little bit larger to uh, hang on to in terms of the length. Now the width and the, the comfort of the grip and the interchangeable back straps is a nice feature with the M&P, which of course the FNX has interchangeable back straps as well. Um, but you're getting into this rig for about half the price of an F FN pistol, which is kind of cool. All right. I'm going to put a couple down in the dirt over here so you can hear this gun. All right, not as much of a tactile reset on the standard M&P trigger. Uh, that's one thing the Apex clicker uh, would certainly help with. And I do have a glove here just so I can check, make sure this can is not walking off. Uh, as I said, we will have a future video coming up on the TLR-1. This is a really nice weapons light for the money. And uh, I've been digging it a lot. The ammo that we're running is some leftover uh, Freedom Munitions Hush, 230 grain, 45 ACP. All right, let's do it. There is some considerable point of impact shift with this suppressor. 
we're probably going to wind up going with something a little bit more compact, uh, something that just takes the edge off a little bit. Um, it's not a bad setup. Yeah, I was wondering if maybe it was walking off, and I've got the right booster in it. Uh, I would prefer maybe something a little bit more compact, but I will say the Tyrant 45 as a suppressor, as it stands, has a lot of volume and it's very, 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 very quiet. I mean, super quiet 45 can. But there's no such thing as a free lunch in physics, guys. You know what I mean? To make it quieter, you got to have more volume, more length, and that does add a little bit of bulk, okay? You can get more compact on a can, but then it's going to be a little bit louder, less volume, okay? Yeah, the trigger's excellent. Uh, the gun is throwing an occasional flyer here and there. I'm, I'm seeing a high flyer. I'll show you something here in a second as we shoot a little bit more. Whoo, yeah. Okay. On these cans, one thing that you can do on this particular one, every suppressor is a little bit different. You can actually index the can if you've got some point of impact shift or if the gun is throwing like kind of a weird flyer or something here and there. You can check to make sure the can is on there better, of course, by tightening it. But you can also pull against the booster assembly and you can rotate the suppressor to actually help change the zero as well. Okay, so in addition to pushing the sights, you can actually rotate the suppressor to kind of fine tune that point of aim a little bit, which is handy. Um, I really love this handgun. It is by far one of my favorite pistols. And I think that the M&P kind of earns a few points over the FNX. One, because of cost. Two is this gun is super easy to disassemble and clean. I'm talking complete field strip, whereby the FNX is definitely a little bit more of a chore to completely disassemble. In fact, <laughs> you pretty much have to tear the safety apart to get it out. So it's not a user level thing that you're gonna do in terms of just taking the FNX apart. Uh, I own an FNX as well. It's a great handgun and I like the 509 a lot, but I feel like this gun as a 45 host, especially with the $10 mags, makes a heck of a lot of sense over the FNX. Um, that's just my opinion, of course. And the Apex Trigger kits are stupid easy to install on your own, really easy to put on. Uh, now on this particular one, we're running the night vision sights. Uh, I like them a good bit. I like the, the nice uh, clear white front that's real easy to see. Uh, they are available in a lot of different colors. If you decide to go with something like the night vision, and I feel like it's worth mentioning that on Big Daddy, the night vision sights were pretty available in terms of different SKUs and things, but uh, they're also considerably less expensive than their Trigicon counterparts. I have Trigicon sights as well, but it's worth mentioning that the night visions are a good bit cheaper. All right. <clears throat> And man, these things in the, uh, these sights are the perfect height for a suppressor. All right, you notice that I rotated that suppressor. And that group walked over to the left. All right, so I'm gonna rotate it back. And it's weird, like it took a couple of shots to kind of settle in. And then once it settled in, that started grouping over there to the left. So if I wanna rotate that group back up to closer to the point of aim, I would take that suppressor and I would dial it back. Let's move the logo all the way over to the right, okay? Now, Every pistol video we do, I like to pair it with a cool knife. In this case, I got a really cool DMO to show you. This is a custom breacher that Brandy had made for me uh, for Christmas one year, and it's a Resident Evil commemorative uh, breacher. Okay, so in the intro, I said it was my zombie pistol. I was kind of alluding to the DMO breacher. And of course, we have the umbrella logo, the green and the red, the red screws, the G10 handles. Really, really cool piece of hardware right there, okay? A uh, nice DMO breacher, okay? Really cool piece of hardware, really cool setup. Perfect knife to go with this particular uh, 
gun here. All right, I'm gonna shoot a couple more mags, let you guys get back to your day. All right, now we rotated that suppressor back over. I'm gonna aim at the bolt. Let's see if that brought our point of impact shift over where we want it. We have not moved the sights on this pistol since I mechanically zeroed them when I installed them. All right, but man, that apex trigger is absolutely money. Really, really nice trigger. Such a nice handgun. All right, see that kind of brought that up and over to the right a little bit more, okay? Not bad. I am checking this can just to make sure it's not gonna walk off. That's nice and tight. All right, the 14 shot mags are nice. Definitely not a problem there. You know, they do stick out. Let's put a few flush fit mags, all right? This, the uh, normal capacity on this gun is 10 shots. So you can see a 10 shot mag fits nice and flush. All right, let's run a couple more mags through this guy here. I'm gonna try group it on this other plate to make sure I'm right there. But we brought that on back around. Let's see if that brought our point of impact back where we want it. Yeah, you know, something strange. I don't know if it's the booster assembly in these AAC suppressors or what. But every now and then it'll throw an errant flyer. And I know it's not me because majority of those shots are, you know, within a couple inches of where I'm looking. So bringing that around, you could see brought our group up and to the right. Okay, when we brought that suppressor over. Not bad. Okay, really cool stuff. I like 45 ACP. I know some people kind of, you know, make fun of 45 as being an old man's caliber or whatever, but as a suppressor host, 45 is very superior to a lot of things because almost all your 45, unless you get into some really fast 165s and 180s that are breaking the sound barrier, most of your 230 grain stuff is going to be subsonic, even at full pressure, which is cool. All right. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. What, what's the saying? They all fall to the 45 ball. 45 don't shrink. 45 don't shrink, boy. All right. <laughs> I'm going to catch so much hate for that. That's okay. Yep. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. This is a Gem 145 ACP uh, M&P full size with the can on it. I thought it'd be cool to show off. We will be revisiting the M&P series in the 2.0 with a lot of the newer offerings that are out there. I just cannot believe that I'd not made a video on this pistol. So here you go. <laughs> really cool setup. This is a nice alternative to the FNX Tactical for those of you that might be looking for one. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Uh, all of our Patreon supporters, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. All of you who purchase man cans or t-shirts over on the website, thank you so much for the support. It means a lot to all of us. Remember, you can use the code IV8888 on killcliff.com. Pick yourself up a nice can of Killcliff, okay? And all of the, a lot of the funds that they earn off of that go right to the Navy SEALs Foundation. We do not make any money off that code. That's just so our viewers can get a discount. Uh, so get 20% off with IV8888 on killcliff.com. Guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next time.